Hey YouTube, today I'm going to make a staple that's been around in my family for a long time. It's a oyster dressing. We make this at the holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, usually we stuff the turkey with it. I won't be stuffing the turkey because my daughter's cooking the turkey, but I still make it and it still is delicious. So I'm going to show you the ingredients, at least the vegetables that I'm going to be cutting up. And then uh, after I get that done, I will show you what meats we put in it. All right, so here we have a large sweet onion, three stalks of celery, a couple of large bell peppers, a whole head of garlic. I'm not using a whole head. Probably use eight, ten cloves, twelve cloves, something like that. We have some flat Italian parsley. Make sure it's not cilantro. They look exactly the same. And some green onion. Onion will hurt. Um, the onions, the parsley, and probably the garlic. I will not process through the grinder. Say the grinder? Yeah. We always used a grinder to chop up the veggies and some of the meats um, for the dressing. My parents had a metal grinder that attached to the table with like a, a clamp. And as a kid, that was my job. I would sit there and crank the grinder while mom fed the vegetables and the meats and all in. Uh, it used to leak, so she had a bowl on the floor to catch all the drippings, so she could add that back into the pot. And um, it would wear out a kid, but uh, this, the grinder is, is gone. I don't know, I don't even know if it, anybody in the family still has it anymore. Uh, I think it was from the Civil War, as old as this thing was. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut these up enough to put them through the grinder, grinder. Grind these ingredients. Again, these I will chop later on, and then the garlic I'll just, I'll chop that up. So I'm going to get that done, and then I'll bring you back and show you what I've done, and we'll get the meat ground up, and we'll take it from there. See you in a little bit. All right, so I've got the veggies ground up. I actually added a medium sweet onion to it so I used a large and a medium sweet onion just because I felt it like it needed most of the more onion. I've got 10 cloves of garlic because the cloves were a pretty good size. So that's what I, I've chopped up for this this dish. I know my method may be a little unorthodox but it worked for me. The parsley and the green onion, I will chop that later and put that in towards uh, towards the end of the cooking process, really. Um, otherwise, they'll just cook away to nothing. I'm just, ch just chopping this up a little bit more finely. And you can use less garlic if you want, more garlic if you want. It's entirely up to you. And this will, a lot of this will cook away. So I won't have big chunks of garlic in the dressing. Okay, so that's what's going in the pot. Garlic, onion, bell pepper, celery. Let me get the meat and show you what we're going to do. Alright, for the meat, I'm going to be using some ground meat, some ground pork. This is about two and a half pounds. This is a pound and a half. 
may not use all of it uh, maybe a, a little bit much we also have a pint of oysters some chicken livers and some chicken gizzards now, I've had the livers in the freezer the gizzards were already frozen I just have to thaw them out a little bit um, when you're grinding it's best to have the meat really cold now, one of the things mom would do is she'd have me grind the meat and the pork together you know regrind it to mix it up but I can do that with a spoon in the pan no, no problem but I do need to grind up these gizzards the livers and the oysters what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind the livers and the gizzards into one bowl of oysters in a separate bowl because that's one of those things that goes in <clears throat> at the end um, I'll start with the livers because they're soft and then we'll use the gizzards which is a harder meat to push the livers out so let me get to grinding on that and I'll get back with you all right I'm grinding the oysters <clears throat> um, I forgot to mention this I use the largest hold plate that I have and I forget what, what size it is if it's three millimeter four millimeter um, you're going to be saving this oyster liqueur that's in the bottom but you need to check it for shell pieces you'll see them they're usually dark you can feel around for them um, but you don't need somebody biting into a piece of oyster shell you could actually run it through a, a strainer if you want all right but so I've got my oysters they're ground up but what I'm going to do to get the rest of my oysters out of the head and this is about to get loud so I'm actually going to use a piece of celery stalk to push everything out you could use bread but it would soak up a lot of the juice that's why I use celery Once you see the celery come out, you pretty much got all the oysters. There'll be a little bit left in here. When you pull it apart, you can get that out. All right, bring you back a little bit. Okay, so I've got my pot on the stove. I'm heating it up. Um, know a lot of the other saying, if you've watched any of my videos before, where's the cast iron? I don't have a cast iron pot this size. My other one's just a little bit too small for this. And my cast iron pot that I have that's bigger is about yay big. So it doesn't really work for up here. I need to get me a cast iron pot about this size. This size. I also have another pot over here. And the reason I have that is because we do have a couple of family members that are on a low sodium diet. And I have to take out, put over here before I add salt to this and make theirs kind of separate. All right. So we have this heating up. going to add a little bit of oil don't want to get too too crazy I guess probably a little bit more oil than I need okay so we add a little bit of oil now we're going to add our vegetables I have a I have it on a medium heat because this stove the burner that I have it on is what's called a power burner so it's a little bit higher in the BTUs than what you would have with others other stoves uh, if you don't have the power burner stove, you probably want to do this at a, on a medium high saute those down get them cooked down a bit and once they've done that I'll bring you back okay I've moved some of the <coughs> veggies over there cooking down quite nicely move them over to this pot so I can go ahead and season these 
So I'm going to put some salt in here. This is some kosher salt. And then just some black pepper. Stir it around. And again, the reason I have this over here by itself is because I have family members that are on a salt restricted diet. So I will not be adding salt to anything in this pot. We'll add a little pepper over there though. Okay, now I'm going to get and start adding meat. First we'll go with some ground pork. I'm not going to use the whole pack. About half of it. This is a one and a half pound pack, so about three quarters of a pound. And add a little bit over here. Meat. Let me wash my hands real quick. I want to wash my hands because I just fooled with the pork. I don't want to cross contaminate with the beef. Although, what I'll be using the rest of this beef for really wouldn't matter because I'm going to end up mixing pork in with it. And we'll have some ground beef there. We'll add some ground beef in over here. Let's go ahead and give those a stir. I had turned the fire down on this one so that the vegetables wouldn't scorch. Come on, mix, you mix. Okay. Now for the 
liver and gizzards that we chopped up. Take some gizzard, some of the chicken liver, put the rest in here. And these weren't back in the fridge. You don't want to leave them sitting out, especially the oysters. Um, that will get bad. Those will get bad quite quickly. So you want to make sure you keep that refrigerated. Get this all mixed up. And the oysters we're going to put in towards the end of the cooking process. Right now we're just getting our meat and our vegetables all mixed together. And if you could smell this, it is absolutely amazing. Now what we'll do also is, at this point, I'm going to add in salt for the meat. Do about four pinches of salt. Get a good bit of meat going in there. And get this all mixed up. This is going to be so good. Oh my goodness. Woo! I can taste it all right. I haven't even put the oysters in yet. Give this a stir. good. Alright, I'm going to let that cook down a little bit and then we'll get back at it. Alright, so while the meat's cooking down, I've rinsed the parsley and uh, the shallots, not shallots, I'm sorry, the scallions, green onions. Uh, we always called them shallots as a kid. And then was working in the produce department for a major grocery retailer. A guy came in looking for shallots, appointed them to those, and got chewed out. So, just going to take this parsley. And then that will get to the chickens. Love the smell of fresh chopped parsley. Add in a little later. Now let's do the green onions. Cut these tips off, they weren't looking too hot. Save the rest for something I'm doing for dinner tonight. Okay, 
right, let's check on the meat. Oh yeah, it's looking good. Now if you notice there's a lot of liquid in there, that's okay. You really, what you want is liquid in there. Because when we add the breadcrumbs, you need that liquid in there for them to soak up. Or else you're going to end up with a very, very dry dressing. This pork, I guess I should have run it through the grinder. It's, coming, it's just staying in these long strings. Not breaking apart like the ground meat did. So I'm having to chop it with the spoon. That's weird. Let's see over here. The no salt guy. Oh yeah, he's looking good. Yep. Everything is looking wonderful. I've never had ground pork come out like that before. Which just strings. Hmm. Alright, next step. Let's put some oysters in here. Now if you don't like oysters, don't put them. But this adds a whole different flavor. Get some there. No need to salt the oysters. Oysters, by their nature, are salty. They're a saltwater mollusk, and they absorb the salt from the water they're in. And they keep it, and they taste salty. In fact, that's people who eat raw oysters. That's what they look for: is the, the ones that have retained a lot of salt. The salty. Mmm, smells so good. All right. Put some parsley. Some shallots. Okay, at this point, what I am going to do is reduce the fire on both of them, and I am going to put a lid on them, and let them cook for about 15-20 minutes. And put the lid to reserve the moisture. So, Alright, bring y'all back when they're ready. Okay, guys. It's been about 15 minutes and everything is looking delicious and the smell is amazing. Whew! Be some good stuff. 
All right, I'm going to shut the fire off now. Now's the time to make the stuffing part. Some uh, Italian style breadcrumbs. Put a little bit in there. Put a little bit more in here. Okay. <clears throat> we use two types of breadcrumbs. The Italian, just because it gives it a somewhat unique flavor. Mix that all around in there really well. Now for a true New Orleans style oyster dressing, I would have bought a loaf of French bread about two days ago, or at the very least yesterday. Let it go stale, then take, crush it up, and use that as well as my Italian style. But because my daughter and I both apparently have sensitivity to glutens, I'm going to use some gluten-free plain breadcrumbs. You can just use regular plain breadcrumbs if you want, especially in an area where they don't have French bread. And what we're going to do is just get this mixed around. Get it mixed really, really well. Let those breadcrumbs sort of absorbing that moisture that's in there. You want to mix it till <clears throat> basically you don't see the breadcrumbs anymore and it becomes stiff. So, like this. Yeah, put some more breadcrumbs in this one. Still a little moist. Don't go overboard on the breadcrumbs or you'll end up with a dry stuffing. Italian, and I know that has glutens in it, but we can tolerate a little bit of glutens. Um, it's just if I were to use regular breadcrumbs in this uh, from the French bread, it's just too much. Yeah, starting to feel right. I'm gonna put the rest of these in. go. Oyster dressing. Now normally at this point what I would do get the light out of the way um, is put it in the fridge and let it cool down and then tonight I would stuff the turkey put it in a slow cooker and roast the turkey for about I don't know eight to ten hours at about 
220 degrees. Uh, normally I put it on before we go to bed with an electric roaster. Just put some water in the bottom, put the roaster on, stuff the turkey, put it in there, go to bed. Wake up in the morning, the turkey is done. My daughter's cooking the turkey, so I don't have a turkey to put in it. So what I'll do is once this cools down a bit, I'm going to move it to a casserole dish. Uh, then we'll bring it over to her house and to help get that baked in the turkey flavor is I'll take some of the drippings from the turkey and I'm going to add that to it, mix it up and then we'll pop it in the oven and heat it up. But as far as right now, it's ready to go. It's stuffing and sitting overnight those flavors are going to meld and just be fantastic. One other thing too would be, I don't know what he's growling at, one other thing that I would have done too that I didn't do is because I don't have the turkey is I would have taken the turkey giblets, the liver, and the gizzard, and the heart, and I would have ground those up as well and put them in. But being my daughter has the turkey and she lives on the other side of town and I'm not running all the way out there for turkey giblets. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to take and just go with the, the chicken livers and chicken gizzards. Um, that's how I've been making it. I didn't make it one year. Rusty, please. <clears throat> I, didn't, I didn't make the dressing one year and the family revolted. <laughs> it was like, okay, okay, I'll make it. So <clears throat> now, guys, y'all have a record. Of how to make this in case something happens that uh, I'm out of town or I can't make it or whatever. Now you know how to make it. Get a fork and let's get a little taste of this. Rusty. It's hot. Steaming hot. Let me get a second opinion. Millie, can you come in here? What? Taste test. Millie, do a taste test for us. See what she thinks. I think I hit it on the nose on this one, people. Okay. You're fucked, madame. I go. Which this one am I tasting? Yeah. I didn't say to wipe it all over the pot. <laughs> Touch more salt. It'll be really? Mm -hmm. Just a touch. Okay. Well, I got the balls in. For me, it was fine, but Millie is a salt eater. We are done. So, thank you for watching. Hope everybody has a, uh, a happy Thanksgiving. And if you, I know this is coming out kind of late for Thanksgiving, but you could try it for your Christmas turkey if you want. I know I'll be making it again for Christmas. It's kind of a, a staple every year, twice a year. Uh, yeah, twice a year. Christmas and Thanksgiving, we make the oyster dressing. Y'all have a good one. Bye.